Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road, and today I'm gonna to share with you a technique which is using vinyl as a mask for stamping. With this technique, I use the vinyl as a mask to add color to that rooster. Also, I used it to be able to add different colors to the stamp set. Now this is a stamp which is from Technique Junkies and it's part of the July 2021 new release. You can see that masking is really important in using this stamp if you want to provide a variety of colors in your stamped image at all. See all these solid color areas? Well, that's where the ink is gonna be. So whatever ink you choose, that's what color it is. And if you want multiple colors, you're gonna have to mask some off. I find that using vinyl is really effective and I'm gonna use it on the rooster today. Now I'm gonna use stays on ink. This is a solvent ink and I'm also gonna use some distress ink in tea dye and some Versamark ink that's for embossing. And this is a piece of um, vinyl and it's hot pink and I'm using that on purpose because there's no way that it's going to fit or, or be like any of the other colors that I'm using. Now, I actually thought about editing this part out of the video completely. Um, even though I'm gonna show you how to stamp on the vinyl, in this part of the video, I actually didn't do it in the best way and had to redo it. I'll tell you about that as we go. First, I'm re-inking the stays on ink. Now, it doesn't perform like a dye ink or like a oxide ink or like a pigment ink. This is a solvent ink and it, um, it acts differently. Now, you can see that as I'm stamping, see how it sticks to the vinyl? That's fine. It doesn't matter at all. Um, see how I only tried to stamp the rooster? Well, that was not the best choice because I went through the whole thing um, and then I had to remake my mask. What I should have done is stamped the whole image on the whole thing and you'll see that in a bit. I had to use a special um, stays on ink uh, remover to clean my stamp and it's specially formulated so it doesn't um, damage your stamps but will remove the ink. Now I'll put links in the description box below um, to these products where you can get them. I get a lot of mine on scrapbook.com or other online shops. Okay, now I'm cutting out the rooster. I'm fussy cutting out. That means I'm very, very detailing um, cutting around the rooster all those little nooks and crannies. Now this is what I'm talking about. See how I had to re-stamp it with the whole image and then cut it out? I should have done that from the beginning. Um, that's fine, that's no good. You cannot do that for this to work. You need to have the whole stamped image and then cut the rooster out with scissors, detailed scissors. So all that being said, I left my mistake in the video so you can see what not to do. <laughs> and when you do it, you'll save a lot of time. Now, what we're gonna do here is uh, make sure that our platform is clean. Whatever stamping platform you use is gonna be just fine. I don't know how you will do this without a stamping platform, I'm gonna say. I, I really um, am not sure. Now, I'm only using um, this Distress Ink in a very light color just to uh, be able to lightly see the image. Okay, I'm not trying to make a real crispy image. I just want to be able to see where I'm going to be working with this whole project. Okay, I'm going to dry it with a heat tool. And again, it doesn't matter how it looks right now. I just need to see it on the paper. As a matter of fact, I probably could have done a second generation stamped image, meaning stamp it on paper and then stamp it again without re-inking. And that would have been fine too, like a little lighter ink. Now, here is my rooster vinyl mask. Remember I fussy cut that out with scissors? Sorry I'm off camera trying to peel. If I, I did want to get my head in the shot. Okay, now I'm gonna very, very carefully line this up right over top. 
And that is my mask. Now the vinyl, if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, this would be vinyl that you might use with your electric cutting machine, like a Cricut or something. Um, it's a fairly low tack um, material. So it will peel up, but because it's um, pretty sticky for being low tack, it'll stick good and resist other materials like embossing powder. So now I'm stamping over top of that image with um, embossing ink. This is the Versamark ink. I'm so sorry if I'm being confusing. Um, some of this is just watching it, but I'm, tr I'm trying to describe as much as possible um, what's happening here. Okay, I throw a little microfiber cloth in the stamping platform, but I don't remove the stamp where I put it because um, I'm going to need it later. Now in this little paint tray, I have um, different colored embossing powders. Um, and I already did that off camera. This one I left, I have this little tiny container of this green. I really apologize. I don't know where every single one of these embossing powders has come from. Um, for example, this green. <laughs> Um, it's left over from something, um, it's fairly old, but the color was perfect. I'm using a little cheap kid's paintbrush to remove, uh, some of the embossing powder where I don't want it to be. And then I'm just going to carefully try to dump this off onto a piece of paper without getting too much extra stuff anywhere. I really want a little bit of green where the grass is on the stamp. But I don't want green on the fence post and I don't want green on the sun rays or on the rooster at all. Some of you might be thinking, well, why don't you just mask off the fence post and the sun rays? And the real reason is because I'm really lazy. That would have been a lot to do for me. and. Really, the feature of this project, I wanted to be the rooster. So the rooster was where I'm going to spend the majority of my time, and I wanted that to come out the best with the most detail and everything else. You know, I'm going to have a sentiment on there somewhere, um, uh, and I didn't want to just do all this extra masking and embossing and all this extra stuff and just cover it up with a sentiment. So... Basically, this is what's happening. The black, this was a little tricky, I'm not going to lie, because um, the black I wanted for like just to just to kind of touch on the fact that there was a house in the background. But again, there's there is probably going to be a sentiment over it. So I didn't want to get too crazy. Um, but the black powder kept um, getting in the sun rays and stuff. I have a little bit of red. Oh, actually, I mixed a little bit of red with a little bit of gold. And that sort of gave me that brick color. And again, just a little outline. I'm not trying to be real meticulous on this house. Um, I did put some brown copper on the um, fence post. And there's another fence post over there. And again, all this is embossing powder. Now remember, I used Versamark ink um, several minutes ago. And it's still staying sticky. If I find an area that is not holding the powder, I can always go in with my Versamark pad again, or even with like the little re-inker and just dab a little bit of like juicy liquid right where I want it. And I'm so sorry I'm performing off camera here. I'm trying to do some details. And you can see I'm, I mean, I'm being detailed because I want this to look good. You know, I want it to have a bunch of different colors in it. But in reality, this is, um, I did speed this up. So you can see that I'm not taking too, too, too much time. And now I've got, a, it's like a glittery, um, I can't remember the brand. Wow, maybe. I don't remember. But um, it's a yellow uh, glittery embossing powder for the sun rays. And just trying to get full coverage here before I use my heat gun. The thing with using a heat gun when you're 
when you're using vinyl as a mask, you have to be mindful that heat is going to warp your vinyl mask. So, you know, what I did here for this project is because I want to use that rooster again, even though it looks kind of gritty and it's kind of gunked up with embossing powder, it really doesn't matter. But I wanted to use that again, so I took it off before I used my heat gun. And now when I heat it, um, I'm trying to get rid of these extra flecks of embossing powder. Um, here's a quick look before I heat set it of just the different colors of embossing powder. Really not that exciting. Just, you know, you watched me do it. Now I'm trying to heat set it here. Um, it is pretty cool, though, that it, you can get the different colors in there if you take a little bit of time. All right, now this is why it's important to use um, the whole image instead of just the um, just stamping the rooster on the vinyl as I did in the beginning. You've got to have the whole stamp in there because now is the point that you're going to cover up all the rest of this, the image and just leave the rooster exposed. Okay, remember we had to cut that out first to do the back. This can be a little bit tricky. Um, just take your time. Don't get too frustrated. This is not something that I would do if I was multitasking. You know, I wouldn't have other things to think about or whatever. Um, that's sort of a funny statement. What I mean is I wouldn't have like boiling water on the stove. That's what I mean. <laughs> Something else I'm trying to do. Now, I haven't moved the stamp. I haven't moved the stamp from its original position at all. From where I first stamped it with that Distress Ink, that light brown ink, now I'm going to go in with some Distress Ink in black. And um, again, I haven't moved it at all. So it should stamp right at the exact same spot, and it does. And this gives me, so now we've got the light brown tea dye, and then on top we've got the black soot with, and that's just regular Distress Ink. And I'm not, I'm definitely not going in multiple times, okay? I just want to have a little, like for example, if I don't get a, all embossing powder on there, um, for some reason I wanted to be able to see like a nice brownish color underneath. All right, now I can go in with my Versamark ink, and I am going to be very generous here. And make sure all the parts of that rooster are covered. And I'm going to go back in again and do it again. And uh, just to make sure, I think I do it just a little bit more. Oh, I know what I did here. Um, just a little bit. I was nervous about the feet. So I, I really was. So this is the reinker, And I'm going to put just, I mean, the smallest dab on a paintbrush and just go in. And you could see how little I'm using. I mean, just barely any. And just touch up around the edges of the the tail and the top and the just the edges just the little edges I think that's another reason why I liked stamping it in the black because you can kind of see where you're not anywhere you didn't get a lot of black that means you didn't get a lot of embossing ink either so you can go back in and touch that up um, also when you're when you're brushing on slight with the re-inker you know, you're going to have a different kind of, it's it's going to be a little bit thicker in those areas. So, um, yeah. I tried this a bunch, I, whatever questions you might have in your head, like if you're thinking, oh, why couldn't you just paint on the embossing ink onto the stamp? Like I tried that and I tried everything you might be thinking of, of a different way to do this. I promise you, I probably tried it. And even though this looks like it would be like pretty tedious, maybe, or maybe not your thing, um, it was a really 
cool technique to try a bunch of different ways. I just was determined to have that rooster embossed. That was my that was my thing. I wanted him embossed in all these different color embossing powders. And I was like, I know that I could figure out a way to do this like this. So maybe this isn't quite your thing. Um, I really hope you find it interesting anyway. Um, it's always fun to learn different things and different little techniques. So I have a dry brush and all these different embossing powders and I'm just going in and almost like using it like a little shovel and just kind of, I'm not brushing it on, I'm actually kind of just dumping it on, like scoop and dump. And um, it looks like I need a little bit more red there. So many varieties of brands. Um, oh, they, oh, you could see here's where I'm mixing some yellow and some red embossing powder. I didn't want it to just be like just red or just yellow or just blue. I wanted other colors. Um, so yeah, I just made my own. Also, I looked up, um, I Googled different images of uh, roosters and s just got an idea for the different colors that are in rooster bodies and feathers. Black for the feet. I suppose I could have chosen brown, but it's fine. And I was trying to think in my mind, I didn't really want to, the more I was doing this, I thought, now, let me think here. Do I, I don't want to co cover this whole bird in a bunch of different colors. Realistically, birds do have some like white space you know, like maybe a white chest or a white belly or something. So I didn't want to just leave it white. I thought, well, let me emboss it white because then any leftover sprinkles of white will only blend in with the rest of the colors and make it look good. And then just, I just dumped it all. Now, I'm not going to save all that mess blend. Some people might, but I'm, I did not. I have plenty of embossing powder and that little bit of throwing away is not going to kill me. So I pulled up the mask. Um, do definitely wait until your embossing powder on the bottom layer is all the way dry before you apply the mask. Look how good that looks. Look. Oh my gosh. I was so happy of how that came out. And this is before I'm heat setting it, of course. So now I have the chance to go in and kind of clean up. Um, like I noticed, I think it was the feet that I needed to go back in and add just another little dab. Also, uh, let me give you a tip here. If you're thinking about doing something with the eye of the rooster, or if you have another stamp you're working with, and maybe it's a person or an animal or something that has an eye, um, don't always feel like, especially with embossing powder, that you have to do that. I, I actually went in and I think I just created a little hole, like cleared away, like how I did with the rest of the embossing powder there, like how I'm doing there. I think what I do here is just go in and kind of clear the airway for that eye hole. Um, yeah, right there. Because I thought, well, if I add black, it's just going to look a little, I don't know. It's just not going to look natural if I do that, so better if I just clear the airway, <laughs> clear the airway, that's not even the right word, <laughs> but you know what I mean, just kind of clear the, the powder out of the way. Yeah, this looks really good. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. Um, I'm going to heat set this here, and then I'll show you a close-up. Look at, the, oh my goodness, it looks so good. That's so satisfying to watch um, embossing powder. <laughs> it looks great. I love it. Now, again, while, while it's warm still, you can go in and add more, you know, while it's freshly melted, you can go in and touch up areas that maybe you missed. Um, but that mask, I could never have done this without the mask and using vinyl was a, a great way to utilize a mask. I'm so happy with the way this turned out. Yeah, that looks great. Let me show you a close-up of the final card here, um, and then I'll give you some information about the stamp itself and a discount coupon code you can get.
yeah it's great here's a look at the finished card um, you can here's your coupon code you can use at Technique Junkies to save 10% check the description box below for um, other links and uh, here's a look at how the whole card turned out with the sentiment I'm thrilled thank you so much for watching this video you can find Sandpaper Road on social media and thank you so much for being a subscriber. It means so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.